In this chapter, we will review every section included in the internal web server featured in some of the Ranger Neo models. The web server will let us control the meter remotely and access to a good number of very useful tools via IP. First, we need to set up the meter's IP address in the Preferences menu and connect the meter to the network. We will open the web server with a standard PC web browser located in a remote location. The web server will ask for a password for security reasons. Once we are in, we can see in the left section four icons assigned to each of the four features included in the web server. The first area is the measurements and spectrum. Here we can choose the channel plan we want to work with and tune any RF channel either by channel or by frequency. Once one channel has been tuned and locked to, we will get all the quality measurements such as power level, carrier to noise, MER, link margin, pre and post BR, etc. In the spectrum analyzer area, we can modify the reference level, span and vertical range. In the upper part of the screen, we can unfold the DVVT config menu, showing the modulation parameters for the channel tuned, the tuning config menu and the terrestrial config menu, where we can select whether we will work in terrestrial or satellite band and whether we need to supply a voltage to any external device. The second area, TV parameters, offers a continuous streaming of whatever service we choose from the RF channel currently tuned and provides us with several metadata about that service and its video and audio details. The third area, Remote Console, provides a complete control over our field strength meter. By clicking the mouse over the meter's virtual buttons and joystick, we can access to any of its features. In this example, we will open the Transport Stream Analyzer. Finally, the fourth and last area is the remote monitoring tool. This will allow us to continuously monitor 24-7 a group of channels defined by a channel plan created during an initial exploration that we must run as a first step. Once that channel plan is created, we must select it and create a new monitoring file. We can define what quality measurements will make the alarms go off, under which conditions and over which specific channels. In this case, we are creating a number of alarms and pre-alarms for the power level, MER and link margin for channels 23 and 36. No matter how the alarms and pre-alarms are defined, all measurements will be stored continuously for all channels from the channel plan selected. We are creating a number of alarms and pre-alarms for the power level, MER and link margin for channels 23 and 36. Now we are ready to run the monitoring tool. After the monitoring file is created and saved, we choose it and start the monitoring process. The monitoring screen 
plots a graph showing the values for each channel for the specific quality measurements that we choose. And below that plot, we can see the last set of measurements taken, corresponding to the last monitoring cycle. And on the right, all the alarms and pre-alarms that went off so far. These alarms can be clicked on, showing when it went off, its alarm condition, and what quality measurement and which value made it happen.